Okay, so this morning we're going to try to apply some rules here defining the least common denominator. <coughs> Let's say, for example, that I was interested in adding these two fractions together. How would I go about it? Right now they don't have same size denominators, so they can't be added yet, right? Because we don't add denominators. We have to have same size denominators, and then we add numerators, don't we? For example, uh, in a, just a very simple fifth grade example, one-third plus one-fourth is certainly not equal to two-sevenths. So we need to find a, a common denominator. In this case... Wouldn't we just multiply this side here by 3 over 3 and this one by 4 over 4? And I don't know what your math teacher's name was in 5th or 6th grade, but I'm, I'm hoping that when they told you to, whatever you did to the denominator, do the same thing to the numerator that they told you. The reason that you were doing that is because you were really multiplying by 1. Isn't that what's happening here? 3 over 3 is 1, and 1 fourth times 1 is certainly still 1 fourth, and 4 over 4 is 1, and so then 1 times 1 third is still 1 third, isn't it? So nothing changes here. We just change the size of the pieces here, and we get offsetting amounts here. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Of course, this is still equivalent to 1 third, isn't it? All we did was change the size of the pieces and then offset the amount we got there to make sure it was still the equivalent. And this would be 3 twelfths, wouldn't it? And then we can add, right? Then we add numerator plus numerator, which is 7 or 4 plus 3, isn't that right? 4 plus 3. And we have common denominator, and we do not add them. So we get a final answer of 7 over 12. Well, I'm showing you this part, and I know you already noticed, because it goes to this. And if we look here, we can see that this, this fraction has something in common already. They both have a factor of 4. So we don't need to create that factor of 4. They already have that, don't they? So what is it that they're missing? Well, this one has an x here, and this one has a factor of x plus 1. This x plus 1 is the factor, and this x is the factor. So the least common denominator here would be 4 times this x times x plus 1. And we can see if we multiply this side by x over x, that we would, right, if we multiply this side by x over x, and this side by x plus 1 over x plus 1, again, just multiplying by 1, this is 1 here, isn't it, and this is 1 here, then this would be 4x times x plus 1, and this would also be 4x times x plus 1. Same denominators, then we can add. This is really, really important stuff. Let's look at another one. This one is kind of cool because you have to look at this a little bit more carefully. We have this 5x plus 2 over 4x squared minus 1, and we have another one here. And the other term we have is 3x, and we have another term of 9x over x plus 2. Now, this becomes a little bit trickier, and what I often wonder is, is why did the author give us the pieces that he or she gave us? So as I look at this piece right here, I'm like, you know what? What does this have to do with this or this? And as I look at this, I realize this is difference of squares, isn't it? So I pull this piece out, and I'm like, you know what? I can rewrite this, right, as difference of squares. So this is 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1, isn't it? Think about that for a second. See if that doesn't factor out. All right, remember what that was. And then if I put this back in here, and I'm saying this is 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 would give me that same thing back that I already had, wouldn't it? But look at this. This is, this is no coincidence that this is here. And this is here, is it? So... Right now, what's the greatest common denominator? The least common denominator, the least common denominator is this times this times this one missing piece. So it would be x times x plus one times. Whoops, sorry. Two x minus one. I'm going to go through tons and tons of examples of this. Um, let's look at just at just one more. Hopefully, this will be really helpful. I'm looking at these two pieces, and I'm trying to find a common denominator here, 3x here. I'm looking at x times the quantity x minus 7. I know you've been in algebra <clears throat> long enough that you're thinking, hey, maybe I should distribute this in. Hold off on that. I mean, possibly you might do that, but let's look at it first. We get x squared minus 6x minus 7. And now what I'm asking you is, why did the author give you these two pieces? Or why, in fact, did they give you this piece or any of these pieces? part of this. Can this be rewritten using one or both of these pieces? And I think if you look carefully, if you factor this out, if 
you factor this out, doesn't this factor out to x minus 7 times x plus 1? Right? And I think that it does. Right? So we can replace this. Right? I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put equivalent factors in. I'm not removing this. I'm just putting it in a different form. x minus 7 x plus 1. So now we see what these two things have in common already, don't we? Right, so their greatest common factor, this, they both already have x minus 7s, don't they? This one has an x, but this one doesn't. This one has an x plus 1, but this one doesn't. So their least common, multiple, at least common denominator is going to be x minus 7 times x plus 1 times x. Again, I'm not asking you to do all this math. Sometimes you just leave this the way it is, right? Remember what, what we would have done up here, right? What we would have done up here, if we, if we were going to do some multiplication, or I'm sorry, some addition or subtraction, I would have multiplied this side by x over x, right? Now I have all three pieces. This piece, this piece, and that piece, right? And I would have multiplied this piece, this side over here, by x plus 1, right? So x plus 1 remember over x plus 1 right you have to, we have to multiply by 1 so this is being multiplied here isn't it so here we have x times x minus 7 times x plus 1 x times x minus 7 times x plus 1 x minus 7 x plus 1 times x right okay I get that this is not simple we're going to keep working on this. I want you to keep practicing this stuff in the book. Give me your comments online, and I'll get back to you. Give me specific questions if you want to talk about those questions. Take really good notes. When you show up to class, ask your teacher, your professor about this, and ask him or her, why does it look the way it, way it looks? Questions. That's, I think, the best thing that we can ask. Good for you.